And right when I started seeing this doctor, one of the first things she wanted me to do was get some blood work done just to see, you know, where I was, what my levels looked like, all of that. And because I hadn't had that checked in years, um, couldn't remember the last time I had it checked. I'm like, okay, fine. That's cool. So get my blood work checked, found out I had diabetes. So that was like a very heartbreaking. It was very... Um, it was just, it was disturbing, very depressing. Um, I, it was one of those things like, how, why me? How did I get here? And then it went to, oh my gosh, how am I getting ready to deal with this? I'm too young for this. I have girls to raise. I have a husband. And thinking about just that I have family members that have diabetes. And um, so I'm thinking like, this is going to be one of those things where it's like a done deal. There's nothing I'm going to be able to do to get out of this. And, you know, the way I had been hearing about diabetes, it almost seemed like a death sentence, you know, because uh, for any of you that don't know, diabetes um, attacks the organs in the body um, and starts shutting things down, gets to the point to where um, you have to sometimes get things cut off and hurts your circulation, like... It just starts to do a number um, on the inside of your body. So, um, you know, my doctor was just like, you know, Tiara, don't, don't fear. You know, like it's, yes, you're not pre-diabetic, you are diabetic. But I think we're, you know, pretty, pretty close to the point to where you don't have to um, do insulin, you don't, um, you don't have to worry about shooting yourself and stuff like that, but I am going to have you, like, checking your blood levels, you are going to have to stick yourself on a regular, I'm like, I'm just, I'm not about this life, I cannot, I don't want to do that, <laughs> I see family members doing that, I don't want to do that, I don't want to have to worry about that, um, and she's like, well, what we're going to do, we're going to start it off with, um, diet and exercise, and um, go from there. Hopefully that you don't have to do any insulin. I'm going to send you to a nutritionist. And um, they're going to work with you on, you know, trying to get control of this. So anyway, fast forward. Long story short. Um, I lost 30 pounds again. And my doctor's like, well, you're doing so well. Yep, but I, I want to have weight loss surgery. And what prompted me to do that is because I went to see my OBGYN and I had not seen him in years. And when he seen me, he pretty much made me cry. Um, well, he did make me cry um, because of how much weight I had gained since the last time I seen him. And he was the one like, you need to have weight loss surgery. Like he said it flat out. You need to have weight loss surgery. Like it's, it's bad. You need to do something about this. Um, and I already kind of had it in the back of my head, but I was like, mm, it's really that serious. And so after he told me that, like, I started looking more and more into it to see, you know, what I was involved. What does this mean? How many choices are there? I went to a seminar, made up my mind. I'm going to have the surgery. I'm going to have the sleeve. And, you know, I knew that there was a chance that I could have, like, extra skin left um, after the surgery. But I was determined. I was like, no, I'm not going to be one of those people. I'm not going to have extra skin <laughs> Um, I'm going to make sure that I'm working out because there's several people who um, have weight loss surgery who don't work out, still very successful, get where they need to be. You know, my doctor was like, well, the good thing is um, you're still young, your skin is still elastic, so you should be good. Um, so I lost over 100 pounds and um, I was doing good, looking good, you know, and I, I was fine. I'm just, find where I'm at, you know, um, and then I started, started kind of contemplating, like, <sighs> here I am, I've gotten this weight loss surgery, I've lost over 100 pounds, but this fupa, this stomach, it's not going anywhere, so I started looking at some options, um, that was like a place I went to, I don't know the name of it, it wasn't like Sanibello, but some place that, um, they can do like the laser, laser removal. And um, 
So I went to check them out and talk to them about, you know, my options. And they checked out my stomach, my skin. They did all like this pinching and touching. And they was like, well, the good news is um, what's in there is mainly skin. You don't really have any visceral fat. Um, visceral fat, for you guys that don't know, is fat that's basically under, um, there's like a separation. So you have the front part of your stomach, there's fat, and then there's like muscle, and then there's fat back behind there. So they told me that I didn't really have that a lot of fat there for real. Um, and I must have cut a lot of it out, you know, during my weight loss process, which I, like, that's a good thing. But the bad thing is, we're not going to be able to do anything about it. Like, the only way you're going to be able to fix this and get rid of this is to have it surgically removed. So that was automatically like a... Because, again, I'm like, I'm tired of surgery. Like, I've had two cesareans. I've had gallbladder removal. I've had uh, surgery on my knee from when I got hurt at work. Um, so like I had something else. I was just tired of surgery. And I told myself when I had to sleep, I wasn't getting any other surgeries. So, you know, I just like, well, you know, I'll just keep chugging along, keep on with this uh, workout and see, you know, what I can do. And I was getting it better. Like you guys can see from my pictures of my transition that I had gotten pretty close to getting my stomach down. I mean, my stomach was definitely down. I mean, I still got some little back rows, but that wasn't a big deal to me. Um, but I was like, but if I want to get rid of this, I, like, I just keep working on it. So um, that's what I did. I kept working on it and um, and uh, so I had, I have a gold picture, which I'm going to show you guys after this video um, from this girl that I found on uh, Instagram. I think her name is Anawa Aja or something like that. And she um, is a very thick, fit girl. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to get to this goal, I'm going to have to do something about the stomach. So... I started researching about tummy tucks and paniculectomy to see um, what that looks like, how much that costs, does insurance cover it, all this other stuff. So I asked my um, I asked my MD doctor. I was like, you know, I'm kind of thinking about getting plastic surgery. Um, you know, what's your thoughts? And she was like, I mean, is this something you want to do? I mean, you look so good. You're this and then. I said, yeah. Everybody keeps saying that. I said, you know, but I'm kind of almost at this point where as good as I look, as, as much as I've done, as successful as I've been with this weight loss, um, I want to look my best self. And this fupa is really, like, working my nerves. And, you know, I had started doing research about it. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to just work it off. I mean, I've gotten my stomach down, yes, but I'm not going to be able to work it off. Not the way I want. So she's like, well, whatever, whatever you want to do. Like, if you feel like that's what you want to do, that's, that's fine. Um, I was also debating if I wanted to get a lift. I'm like, if I'm going to get, um, get my stomach done, then Maybe I should look at getting a lift, too. So I asked her about that, and then she said, you know, that's perfectly safe. That's fine if you want to get that. Um, I started still talking to my husband about it, and um, he was like, I don't really think you need to, honey, but if that's what you want to do, you know, he was supportive about it. Either way I go, whatever way makes me happy. I'm like, okay. So there was researching, um, getting in different groups, following surgeons, um, taking a look to see, you know, what does this cost? What does this look like? Can I get this covered by insurance? And so I had heard that, you know, between the paniculomy and a tummy tuck, that this, there's insurance companies that will cover a 
paniculamine, but they won't do the tummy tuck. So that's why I'm like, well, let me see what's really like the difference. So when I start looking at the pictures to see what the difference really is, what it looks like, what is involved, I'm like, okay, could I try to go through insurance to see if they'll cover the procedure? I could. Um, but then I start, I reached out to them to find out if they would, which is Blue Cross. They say, yeah, we'll do it. But you're going to need to show like proof and there needs to be reasons why this is like necessary that it's giving you problems, you know? So I was going to have to start going to my doctor, like on a regular basis recording that, you know, I got rashes, it's itching, it's this, it's that. And I wasn't having that problem. I just didn't want it. So, um, I was like, mm, I'm just going to save up for it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go through all that. And I definitely want to go through all that just for them to deny it. And then I got to go through and do an appeal and all this other stuff. So when I tell you God made a way, God made a way. I prayed about it. Um, of course, right as I'm making this decision, this is when COVID started happening. Um, and, you know, as I told you guys, like, during the COVID time, I was able to get in so much overtime, bonus type of stuff. So, um, that's what really, like, helped me to be able to pay for this. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, here it is. Two weeks in a day, 15 days post-op, and she is gone. She is gone. And I do not regret it at all. Like, of course, I'm only two weeks in um, dealing with recovery, dealing with, you know, got a doctor, the scar, and all this other stuff. Um, but I'm so happy. When I tell you guys, I can't wait till I be able to get back in the gym because now I can see the vision. I can see the vision, um, looking at my goal, where I want to be. I'm like, man, I'm so close now. I'm so cl close to this goal that I want um, with the way I want my body to look that I can just, it's just, you can just see it. Um, so that's why I did it because I made a goal I told myself, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to get to. This want to be. I didn't do this for anybody else but myself. Um, and um, my confidence has never been an issue. Even, even before, even when I was overweight, confidence was never an issue for me. Um, I just, I'm one of those people that I just want the best. And I want to do the best for me, myself. Um, us, a lot of times as mothers, as wives, you know, a lot of times we're not doing things for ourselves because we're pouring so much and focusing to our children and wanting to do things for them, wanting them to be their best, pushing and motivating them, um, raising them, taking care of our family, our household, working. Um, there's a lot of different things that we don't do. And this is one of those things where I had to get to the point to where I was like, I want to do this for me. Like at first, I could not fathom spending <laughs> spending a bunch of money to get um, this procedure done. So just so you know, my procedure, um, I got an extended tummy tuck. And so the difference really is that, um, I'm sorry, I don't have all my tools in front of me. That's why I'm using my fingers. Um, extended tummy tuck along with muscle repair. So the surgeon that I use, she throws muscle repair in. So it comes with it. So it's not additional. Um, and then um, extended tummy tuck, muscle repair, and lipo. So I got lipo in like in four areas. Um, and the reason why I got the lipo is because I was just looking, you know, along with this research I told you guys I've been doing, it seems like that people had the best results when they 
added on a little lipo to pull out you know some extra fat that you might have in certain places to achieve the best results for your shape so that's what I did so just to give you an example which I'm going to show you on a picture um, a regular tummy tuck will usually probably be about here so mine went all the way to here so let's see that weight something I'm so happy, guys. Um, this was a great experience for me. Um, I um, went to, told you guys, Zoo Uet Plastic Surgery in Miami. I actually just completed a couple of reviews for them this week. Um, my experience was great. Um, I know a lot of people, not even just here, like with doctor's offices, period, it seemed like a lot of people have um, issues with offices with dealing with like your front desk people i know i do i've had that at other doctor's offices as well um because people sometimes at the front desk just don't care as much as the the doctor themselves because they don't have as much vested it's not their business um but the ladies at these offices that i've talked to that i've met in person on the phone um were all kind they were all friendly they were all courteous um and I didn't have an issue with anybody. Um, I think my only one gripe that I had was the fact that um, when I went down there, you have to, they want you to arrive like two days early for pre-op. And um, so I'm thinking pre-op was gonna take maybe, you know, an hour or two for that process to get like your final weigh-in, final instructions that type of thing, meet the surgeon, but that pre-op time took over six hours. So here it is, I'm getting into Miami on Monday, um, thinking that, okay, on Tuesday, I will, um, you know, go up there, kind of get that out the way, and then we can spend the rest of that day doing a few things because that was gonna be, I wasn't gonna be able to do anything for a few days and I was hardly able to do anything. Um, when I when I left from there, I had to go get my nails taken off, um, which I knew ahead of time that was probably gonna be an issue. But, um, so I went to get my, my nails taken off, went to get something to eat because I've been sitting in there for hours. And then, um, I don't know, I think we just took like a stroll around town or something at night. There really wasn't much I could do. I wanted to go to the beach that day. Um, so they just, it should have been communicated that, um, you know, pre-op can take a while, you know, be prepared. I was like, it should have been, it should have been said that you could be a pre-op for half a day. That would have been better. And then if it was not as long, it would have just been a good thing. That it wasn't as long. You'd be like, oh, okay, it didn't take as long as I thought, you know. And that's just something that I've learned in sales, dealing with customers, clientele, whatever. It's better to set the expectation that it could be this, um, or just giving someone a heads up so they can be better prepared, and then they're not going to be as aggravated or upset because it actually turned out to be better or not as bad. So, but other than that, my experience was great. My surgeon is great. I still text her to this day, and she still answers me within a couple of hours. Um, I could ask her whatever I need to, and she's there. Um, so, that, that experience has been great. Um, and again, I don't regret it. I would do it all over again. Yes, it's painful. Yes, there's some things you got to go through, just like any other surgery like a cesarean where you literally feeling like you got to learn how to like walk around again and you know getting in and out of a car like still as of right now I can't comfortably lay flat in my bed I can lay flat but I would need someone to assist me to sit up um I could still feel like my stomach muscles struggling a little bit because I had the muscle repair and I'm sure my healing you know, 
will take a little longer because of the muscle repair and the lipo. Actually, I kind of heard that with both things. Because um, my lipo, the section she did, she did it from up here. That section, that bruise is still sore. So it's going to take time.